So today we will be discussing different types of methods that we can use to come up with product ideas. And uh, I understand that most likely you already have some idea that you're coming into this course with, uh, but even if that is the case, I encourage you to watch this video uh, because as we test your idea, it is very likely that uh, you will need to modify it and then the exercises that we go through here uh, can be very useful for coming up with new and creative ideas and maybe even improve upon the idea that you already have. So with that, let's jump into it. Now, as we start coming up with ideas for our product, it's very difficult to sit down with a blank piece of paper and no limitations and come up with good ideas. Because that's simply too much freedom, uh, it's very easy to become paralyzed, it's uh, something known as the blank page syndrome. And because of that, it's good to anchor our creative process in something. And one anchor that we can use is to start with a problem that we want to solve. And this problem could be something that you have personal experience with and that really bugs you in your own life and that you would just like to solve for yourself and others. Or it could be a problem that you derived from a very objective analysis of the market and looking for where the demand lies. And starting with a problem and innovating around that, I think that makes a lot of intuitive sense for most people. Because then you're actually helping somebody uh, directly and removing some friction point in their life. But at this point, we can remember our last lesson and uh, think about the pizza blanket and ask ourselves, uh, what was the problem being solved here? And uh, this brings us to our next starting off point for innovation, which is to look for emotion. Because the truth is that some products, they simply don't solve any visible problem. And uh, this is of course true with uh, most of fashion. This is true with many of these type of signaling products like uh, jewelry. So let's say that I have an idea for a transparent shoe and uh, that I think this is really cool. I don't know really why I love it so much, but I just think it's so cool to have a transparent shoe. Okay, that's a good starting off point. Let's see if other people share that irrational feeling for transparent shoes. And the way you test this is by actually going and talking with people in person. And uh, if you talk with people and you see that they are calm, they are polite when they respond, they say maybe, oh yeah, that's a great idea, I would definitely buy that. But you don't see this crazy sparkle in their eye, you don't see a jolt of energy, then that's a bad sign, right? Because if it's a product that does not solve any visible problem, then it needs to play on emotion. And if there's no emotion, then that's maybe a sign to reconsider. Now, very soon, we will sit down and start sketching on new ideas for our product. But before we do that, I want us to do a very, very useful exercise. And that is to sit down and list all of the non-negotiable attributes of what you're trying to create. And this will help you do two things. This will help you narrow the space of uh, possibilities further, helping you overcome the blank page syndrome. And it will also help you to not take anything for granted. So it's a type of first principle thinking where you're really not jumping off from what already exists, but you're reasoning your way up from what you know needs to be true about a product. Talking about it in this way, it's a little bit abstract. So let's find an issue in the real world that I want to solve and then list all of our non-negotiables for that problem. And as luck would have it, I actually have something that has been bugging me for a very long time, which you probably have seen in the video already. And that is this very moldy and very ugly pot to my right. Uh, the issue here is that I can't put the pot into a larger uh, ornamental pot because it weighs a lot and I need to take it out every time I water it. And I also don't want to put it into a larger pot because that would make the size of the base too large for the plant that actually grows inside of the pot. So what I want is some kind of quick way to cover up this ugly exterior without utilizing a full-on heavy ceramic pot. So let's go through our exercise and list what we know must be true for a product that achieves that. The first thing that we can assume, and the most obvious one, is that it needs to hide the ugly inside of the pot. So it needs to hide the mold, right? And then the second thing that we can assume is that it needs to work for different pot sizes, whether this is by making several different sizes of the product or by making the product itself adjustable. And then the third thing that I think we can put down as a non-negotiable is that it needs to be compact enough for easy shipping, because after all, we're talking about an e-commerce business, right? 
and in my mind these three non-negotiables already bring out some ideas for how this product should look and for how it should work. Now that we have put down these non-negotiables we have two different paths that we can take. One of them is to directly go to a designer and ask them to start creating concepts based on our non-negotiables and the problem that we're trying to solve. The other option that we have is to brainstorm ideas yourself. And the option that is best for you, it will really depend on how much you want to involve yourself in the design process. But since we will later discuss how to work with designers, let's for now talk about brainstorming ideas yourself. So how do we brainstorm ideas? Well, the main method I use for myself is what I called exploratory sketching. Uh, exploratory sketching differs from regular sketching in that it is not meant to ever be shown for anyone really. And this removes any requirements for your sketches to be pretty, which allows you to go through a larger number of ideas instead of spending a lot of time detailing every single sketch. And if you still feel shy about starting sketching, I want to tell you about Dieter Rams. Dieter Rams, he is widely considered to be the most influential designer who has ever lived. But if we look at his sketches, they don't look that good. <laughs> Actually, they look horrible. Uh, but despite that, the final result of uh, these sketches was always magnificent and it created some of the most iconic products in history. And with that, we have come to the end of this lesson, so let's talk about today's task. And the task, it is simply to come up with a product concept using the methods that we described in this lesson. So, find problems that you would like to solve, list non-negotiable attributes of uh, your product, and then do exploratory sketching, also known as doodling, to come up with ideas. And don't take this exercise too seriously. Uh, think of this as the first attempt out of many, because in the next lesson we will learn how to evaluate whether an idea has potential, and then perhaps you will uh, go back to the ideation stage, create another concept, and uh, iterate until you have something great to move forward with. So see you in the next lesson.